Hi. This video is part one of a series of videos to address the common argument skeptics and evolutionists claim demonstrate that evolutionary theory is fact. Now, the work I will be interacting with is something of a, of a short secular manifesto written by a gentleman who has a following on social media. Now, I've chosen to interact with his work because he advances, again, as I said, common arguments and criticisms against Christian theism and beliefs in God in general, which, you know, to a lot of people, what he says or what people in this camp say tends to stump them or shut down believers. But actually, he does what many I see do. It's called slogan parroting. He regurgitates scientific claims, which upon further inspection are speculative or imaginative, not scientific. So my purpose in these series of videos, I don't know how many I'm going to make, is to demonstrate that an evolutionary perspective isn't derived through empirical sciences as the claim is. Rather, it is driven and shaped by a natural philosophy. You can call it naturalism, you can call it Darwinism, but there's already a pre-commitment to this understanding of reality that governs their thinking. It is a worldview. And when it comes to worldview, there's no such thing as neutrality. Theists and non-theists are looking at the same evidence but arriving at contrastive conclusions. And I believe that one becomes a Darwinian not because the science led one there, rather one already assumes God cannot account for the origins of life and the world around us. I will say this too, Darwinism or Neo-Darwinism or Naturalism, it is a dogmatic philosophy. Those who affirm this position, I assert, do so because of a prior commitment to naturalism or materialism, saying all there is is matter, right? Now, there are scientists, obviously, that are seeking, trying to seek the truth and be honest about it, and they want to find the origins of life and the answer to life's purpose and secrets and, and why we're here, where we're going. Um, but ultimately what happens is they have a different starting point when they do science. And, and really they, they, they fail to account what even makes science possible. Furthermore, scientists who champion the truth of evolution, they do not want evolution as defined in the scientific community as a purely materialistic process that has no direction and reflects no conscious purpose to be true. They really don't want that to be true, because if it is, then we cannot even do science, and more on this in a little bit. So what makes science possible? And this is important because evolutionists, without batting an eye, claim that science is the only reliable method of knowing truth about the world. If you are following me closely, what is wrong with that statement? That it's an assumption that hasn't been proven how can you prove that statement by science? It is a self refuting statement because there is no scientific test one could do to prove that science is the only way to truth. Furthermore, as stated, the scientific method only measures matter in motion. So when someone claims science has proven that God does not exist, the person is making a categorical error. Science, as mentioned, only measures the natural world. Science cannot rule out God because it isn't designed to observe or validate God's existence. God is spirit, right? The existence of God falls into the realm of philosophy and theology, and we'll get to that in some later videos. But being back to the claim that science is the only way to determine truth, there are actually other categories of truth that science cannot prove. First category, existential truth. Science cannot prove that you are all that you are merely a brain in a jar being manipulated to think this is all there actually is, right? Like the matrix. It cannot also prove to you that the world wasn't created 10 minutes ago with the appearance of age, with, with fake memories in your head and, and half digested food in your stomach. However, it is still rational to believe that our memories are true and that the world is real. Category two. Moral truth, science cannot prove that rape is evil. While it is possible to demonstrate, for example, that there are negative physical or psychological effects of rape, there is no scientific test that can prove it is evil. Science can describe how the natural world is, but moral truth carries an oughtness, again, how things should be, that goes beyond what merely is. Category three, and I already mentioned this, this is about logical truth. Consider the statement again, science is the only way to really know truth. 
You can't prove that statement by science. It is self-refuting because, as I said, there's no scientific test that you could do to prove that it is true. Science assumes logic to be true in order for science to work. Category four, historical truth. Science cannot prove that Barack Obama won the 2008 United States presidential election. There is no scientific test we could do to perform to prove it. We could have an investigation if you wanted to confirm that he actually did win, but the method for proving historical truth is different from testing scientific truth since, since, since historical truth, excuse me, are by nature non-repeatable. You cannot repeat historical truths. In the category five, experiential truth. Science cannot prove that your spouse loves you. When asked why so-and-so loves you, you may cite precedent, times of and their behavior demonstrates love for you, but this is a particular type of historical truth. There is no scientific test that can confirm a lifetime experience of experience of knowing a person. So as you can see, the scientific method isn't the only way to determine truth. If one makes such a claim, they are quite mistaken and have made a fallacious argument. The one who follows this train of thought has already presupposed that naturalism is true. And such proponents of science is the only method of knowing truth. In that assertion, they commit what we call scientific suicide. Excuse me. Again, the scientific method was purposed to evaluate empirical evidence. That's matter in motion. But in order to use the scientific method, one needs conceptual tools, non-matter, to perform the method. So reason, reliability of our senses, laws of logic, morality. These tools are in the truth box that a scientist needs to have first to do science. So then what is ultimately the determiner of what is real, true, or objective? Is it the method or the conceptual tools? If it is the method, then one is assuming that the tools used to do the method are self-evident truths, which is arbitrary because one has to prove why these tools are the proper tools for claiming that the scientific method is the most accurate way to determine what is real, true, or objective. Now, if one affirms that it is the tools used to perform the scientific method that make the scientific method the most accurate method, how does one account for them from a materialist perspective, a naturalist perspective? They are conceptual. They are, they are, they are non-material. So to use them, the non-material, I'm sorry, this, they have to use them to determine what is real, what is material, right? Now the burden of proof then is on the evolutionary scientist. He needs to prove using the scientific method that the laws of logic, reason, and certain morals are real, but he can't. All he can do is assume they are. He can say they are there because they are. However, he is being arbitrary. He doesn't have a starting point of intelligibility to reason intelligibly. Now, I'm not saying he can't reason intelligibly. Rather, he has no basis on which to ground his argumentation. His presuppositions lead him to commit scientific suicide. Now, to be fair, I must admit my presuppositions. I am a Christian. I assume that God is the creator of heaven and earth. Creation is the material expression of the infinitely wise and creative God of the Bible. And so what must be understood is that we all have presuppositions, and ultimately we all argue circularly. There is no way to escape it. Why? Because we all need to have a grounding, a foundation that supports the entire worldview structure that we have constructed. If we do not have an immovable, self-existent, ultimate reality that is the source of everything else, something that is there just because it is, then our arguments are not only circular, they are arbitrarily circular. That means the individual's claims, beliefs, arguments, etc. are tautologous. Tautologous. That's a new word for some of you probably. Tautologous. I never used it, but I'm using it here. Basically, they are saying, if you say, I think this is so because I think it is so, you're ultimately assuming what you're trying to prove in that statement is called a tautology. Solid arguments are solid arguments if they have a solid foundation from which to argue. Now, as a Christian, my foundation is a self-existent, eternal being where intelligibility originates. The evolutionist can only say 
a non-sentient, non-intellectual material entity that did not exist at some point, then came into existence and is responsible through an unguided process for the intelligent life around us as his foundation. That's it. Or he can just say mere human reasoning, but again, it's circular. But reasoning, logic, and morality are conceptual tools, thus they can't be proven empirically. Yes, we use those tools that allow the scientific method to be a valid method of analysis, but how is it that these tools exist so that we can perform and expect the scientific method to produce consistent results? That is the key piece of all of this. I can trust those tools because they came from an infinitely wise creator who has complete knowledge. He designed the world with, with order and logic, revealing his infinite power and wisdom. Now again, we all make circular arguments, but I can make my arguments because I have an immovable foundation of truth, goodness, order, and wisdom on which to base my worldview. And the evolutionary worldview doesn't. In the end, who is the one operating more on blind faith? Again, so this is the very first video of a series of videos, and I look forward to continuing on as we look through uh, the lens of Darwinism and see that it's a philosophy, a worldview, that's not built on solid science, as many claim. Thanks.